The Israeli military says it carried out attacks in Syria and Gaza after a barrage of rockets were fired into Israel. A spokesperson said the Israeli Defence Forces had launched a series of strikes against what it called terrorist targets belonging to the Islamic Jihad organisation in southern uh, Damascus, as well as dozens of similar targets in Gaza. Let's get you some other world news now. The Israeli military says it's carried out airstrikes on sites belonging to the militant group Islamic Jihad on the Gaza Strip after they fired a barrage of rockets at Israel. Well, Islamic Jihad said it carried out Sunday's uh, rocket fire in response to Israel's killing of one of its fighters earlier in the day. Palestinian security sources confirmed an Israeli aircraft hit the group's base in the north of the coastal strip. Turkish officials say at least nine people have been killed and dozens more injured in the country's east following a magnitude 5.7 earthquake. The quake hit the villages in the uh, Turkish province of Van but was centred across the border in neighbouring Iran where 75 people were also wounded. Well, at least three of the dead were children. Nine people are believed to be in a critical but not life-threatening condition. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says a number of Turkish troops have been wounded in Syria's Idlib province after pro-Damascus forces targeted their military convoy. Turkey recently deployed thousands of troops to Idlib to bolster a campaign against President Bashar al-Assad's forces. In the meantime, the uh, devastating impact on civilians' lives continues. France 24's Fraser Jackson has a story. Near the village of Kafalusin in the north of Idlib province, dozens have pitched their tent, hoping to flee the Syrian army's campaign against the rebels. I fled to Atarib when a bombing raid started. Then I arrived near the Bab al Hawa crossing next to the border wall. Here are my tent and my children. Many risk their lives to cross this wall that Turkey built to stop people crossing its southern border. Abu Khabar made a ladder so he and his 11 children could escape to safety. We have no solution. The Turks have snipers. And whoever approaches the border wall is shot dead immediately. So either we cross and get shot or we face the regime on this side. Aren't we human beings? Look how disastrous our life is here. If we're forced to, we will enter Turkey. We will break down the wall and go in. Standing between them and a better life, an imposing wall topped with barbed wire and surveilled by watchtowers. Turkey is already hosting more than 3.6 million Syrian refugees and it is determined to stop more from crossing the border. Iran's interior minister has put the participation rate for Friday's parliamentary elections at 42.6 percent. That figure then marks the lowest turnout in a general election since Iran's 1979 revolution. Well, with many reformists and moderates barred from taking part in the poll, conservatives look set for a landslide victory. Fraser Jackson brings you details. It's an historic low. Under 43 percent of the population turned out to vote in Iran's Friday parliamentary election, the lowest since the 1979 revolution. Supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei was quick to blame foreign influence for the low voter turnout. Their propaganda began a few months ago and got worse as the election approached. In the past two days, under the pretext of an illness and a virus, their media did not miss the slightest opportunity to discourage people from voting. Our enemies are opposed to any election by the Iranian people. Disillusioned by the establishment, many of Iran's increasingly young and educated population abstained from the vote. In Tehran, turnout was just 25%. Days before the election, over 7,500 candidates were barred from running. Among them, some of the most prominent moderate-leaning and reformist candidates loyal to President Rouhani. Of the 290-seat parliament, 90 people standing for re-election were included in the ban, paving the way for conservative candidates to sweep to a landslide victory, claiming all 30 of Tehran's seats. An election with only one party and another that has been filtered, it's not an election. 
It's a selection. Many people voted in previous parliamentary elections, but the enthusiasm has faded more and more. Corruption, mismanagement, the recent downing of a Ukrainian airliner and a stagnating economy crippled by American sanctions have turned Iranians away from their government. The Conservatives' victory now gives moderate-leaning Rouhani even less room for manoeuvre. Well, staying with Iran, Ali Vayez is the director of the Iran Project at the International Crisis Group. Earlier, he told at France 24 why some Iranian voters were reticent to cast their ballot. The majority of Iranians are disillusioned with the fact that this system just has proven to be incapable of reforming itself. Uh, and so voting or not voting really doesn't make a major difference. And especially because the parliament has proven to be almost powerless in deciding the major questions in Iran. Uh, for instance, the November protest that happened after the tripling of fuel prices, uh, it occurred at a time that uh, the parliament actually had no role in that decision which had a major impact on the well-being of uh, Iranian people. Uh, and also on foreign policy or other major issues, parliament has proven to be quite powerless. So I think that's why uh, we saw a very low uh, turnout, in addition to the fact that uh, massive disqualification uh, of uh, more moderate candidates uh, had uh, created a sense of political apathy as well. Uh, look, the hardliners have lost every single election in Iran since 2012. Uh, and I think um, this is a new round with the parliamentary elections that the uh, hardliners have now taken over the parliament. Uh, if passes prelude in next year's presidential election, they're also going to take over the presidency. And these elections are happening at a critical time for the system because um, uh, the Supreme Leader's succession is looming in the horizon. Uh, and if that's the case, basically, I think the more moderate forces of Iranian politics have lost out for the foreseeable future, and they don't have a say in uh, this critical moment in the country's history uh, when uh, basically the elite is going to decide about who and what comes after Ayatollah Khamenei, uh, who's now uh, 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 just turned 80 a few months ago. The parliament has limited powers in terms of its influence on foreign policy, uh, but without any doubt, it's going to make life for uh, the administration of President Rouhani much more difficult. It, was, uh, it is going to reduce their maneuvering space, uh, and so it would probably make it more difficult for Rouhani to come to any kind of a deal with uh, either the Trump administration or the West generally, uh, and it's going to put them under more scrutiny. So all in all, I think this is uh, Iran uh, turning uh, into a more hardline direction, both in terms of internal policy and uh, foreign policy as well. In other news, police in Ethiopia say a suspected bomb attack has wounded dozens at a rally in support of Prime Minister Abi Ahmed. The attack happened in the town of Ambo, west of the capital Addis Ababa. Seven people have reportedly been uh, arrested in connection with the incident, which uh, has raised security fears ahead of a landmark national election, which is due to take place on August the 29th. And finally for you, Spanish authorities have uh, closed airports on the Canary Islands owing to a windstorm that's uh, blinding the archipelago with uh, sand and dust. Incoming planes have been rerouted and no flights are being allowed to leave the island's airports. The regional government for the Canary Islands says wind gusts which are carrying sand from the Sahara could reach 120 kilometres per hour. Authorities have closed schools for Monday. That brings us up to date with the news. More international headlines in 15 minutes' time here on France 24. Join us then.